discussion. I think we had a lot of focus on branding. Um, finance, of course, works behind the scenes, but equally important uh, to uphold the company's reputation, brand, and performance in the market. Um, I'll, I'll just make a few opening comments before opening up to this very esteemed panel that I have. When you think about three things really as part of the topic. One is technology, capabilities, which is really the role of technology, and then the financial processes of an of a organization. Two, three things that I think once we frame this conversation, we, the two is to look at technology and finance. One is finance for finance, so within finance, becoming more powerful, high performing, lean, mean uh, within finance. The second is refinance for enterprise. How does finance help business right now? Um, so really there are two different ways to look at it, they're very connected. Uh, a couple of things I would say uh, from, from where we sit at PwC, we work with a lot of CFOs across organizations, across public sector, and private sector, mid-sized companies, emerging companies, and large tech companies. Uh, two key things that one can clearly see. One is consumers uh, become very dramatic, one is instant gratification, and using technology like the uh, And therefore, consumers forcing the enterprises, uh, you know, who were listening very intently to the CEO of Biryani by Kido, uh, use this word, uh, you know, force change. And consumers force enterprises to work connected. The finance function of an enterprise, therefore, needs to get connected more to the ecosystem. And finally, I would say, responsible business is becoming very, very important, not only to be a good citizen and for society, but also it, it makes good business sense. So the regulations, Regulators are always very active uh, with the finance function uh, and wanting uh, the company to get more and more faster and with the trust of consumer interests uh, stakeholders. So that's a broader environment within which we will frame the conversation. And the first question I'm going to pose it is to Sandhya. Um, Sandhya, the role of technology, right? um, and all kinds of technology floating out there, ERPs, surround tech, cloud tech, and so on and so forth. Right. How do you see this evolving? What is your prediction for 2025 and 2025? So, thank you for the opportunity and the the context. So, if you look at five years back, ten years back, uh, any intervention in technology was always through the industry. So, it was all about efficiency. And, uh, it was a bit like an industrial revolution where, you know, I have to think of the machine for the uh, and as we kept doing that, and we started manufacturing like thousand units per hour, and then the customers in one small, uh, different way to do that. So this has to be to the to that customer needs. And that's exactly what happened to technology as well. These are so standardized and so process driven and so safe that the agility and responsiveness that today's uh, environment is, they did not have. And that's why some of these newer technologies. Companies which are more closer to uh, more responsive to customers, more closer to customer needs, more closer to stakeholders. But then when we started scaling these technologies, we started having challenges of efficiency and control. So let's take the travel expenses of the process. Initially, when we used to, I, I've been in India, I think I'm going to older generation. I've been in India where we will have some very dumb screen which you can half an hour uploading a travel statement and then it's a huge workflow of some 20 man hours by the time of travel because it's the light of the day and some maybe 25 days by the time the money comes. Then obviously there was lack of responsiveness and then a lot of digitization happened. You think you can submit and you can pay and you can check later. And then after we started seeing that we started losing control. And that's when the need for more intelligent technologies started coming in and say, can a machine oversee what you are doing? If you are a, a person who is prone to make errors, then I will put you through a manual field. So some of those logic started taking place. So the, uh, I personally feel that technology evolution will mirror the needs of the business and therefore every business in a stage of evolution they will adopt technologies as we move on. So I want to take an example of Narayana and then I stop. I don't take too much time. So uh, Narayana is a very uh, efficiency driven healthcare model. And it's been, uh, there is a case study on Narayana and Harvard and a book written on the Narayana model. So one of the key uh, determinants of the model is efficiency. 
and get it efficient in all ways. So I joined yours as the CFO uh, in December last year and I asked, where am I going to You know, because when you start as a finance head, you're always looking for some Excel sheet to prepare and somebody to give an Excel sheet to. So that's really, in, in many ways, a significant part of the job. And then, where am I going to sheet? Please hand over. There was no Excel sheet. Nobody prepares any data for anybody in the It's all completely digitized and at transaction level, to so and so that the minute a blood sample is tested, the doctor will have an app in which the doctor will get an update that this is the reading of the patient that they can respond immediately. So that's a level of digitization they will choose because for that business need that digitization was required. Maybe in a different context they will go so. So I wouldn't say that by 2025, uh, you know, everyone will reach this level of digitization or this level of innovation. But as businesses evolve, finance processes and uh, technologies will mirror the business needs and uh, we, we will try to find more agile and responsible ways of making the business. Thank you, Sanjay. It was a good day. I'm the opportunity to rewind this conversation. I think that was a storyline of how technologies have worked. So, really excellent. Thank you. Um, it's an interesting panel because we've got a mix of CFOs and CPOs and CIOs. And there is a partnership uh, and there is a natural conflict sometimes. Like, those of you who run the uh, business outcomes of technology. So I'm going to turn to, uh, to Anand now and say that what has been your experience of delivering outcomes of technology? Talk to us a little bit about your experiences and share the learnings. What has worked and what in your opinion hasn't worked you know, in delivering outcomes? Sure, no, thanks for the question. So, you know, uh, Unfortunately, when you talk about digital transformation across organizations that have been a part of few organizations, usually, at least in my experience, finance comes last, right? So you talk about operational efficiency, how do you address consumer experience, and so on and so forth. Where the level of value lies in actually you know, making financial processes more efficient, right? So, um, I can give you multiple examples, but in my opinion, there are you know, three basics, so to say, right? So one is, having the right integrations in place. In many companies, even the basic integrations are not in place and, you know, typically it's, it's you know, junk in, junk out, right? So when you need your ERP systems, defining the right processes, for example, at what point in time do you trigger sales postings in the case of a refund? So it's as simple as that, right? So working out all those nuances. Then there's this entire thing around data, right? Having good data platform. And what I've observed that even in uh, you know, digital native companies, um, it's, it's often not very true, right? That, uh, the data platform is going to be And finally, it's all about the right? So, uh, from purchase to pay, you know, one example, right? So, uh, this is in retail, it is in uh, the organization, especially in finance. Uh, and what it's right now, it's uh, very good for the digital transformation in finance that technology already exists. Uh, but we need to understand how to use it and when to use it. And this is the most important, uh, uh, I think, uh, uh, advantage now for, for, for moving forward into digital transformation. Uh, for example, now in technology, uh, we have uh, the blockchain. Uh, blockchain allows us for uh, data uh, decentralization, transforming uh, data using secure way. Uh, we have uh, cloud data visualization that allow us uh, to easily use our data link to show all these data to our stakeholders easily. We have, uh, for example, RPA, as you mentioned, about the processing automation. RPA uh, with, uh, now are helping to monitor these. Uh, uh, the is going on about the technology, finance for the technology, the efficiency. So, as an innovator, as a scientist, I like to put it in a different way. The, not the technology for the finance. I would like to say the finance for the technology. See, because now we discussed a lot of value. You wanted a tool for improving efficiency. Okay? And you talked about the dependency on the technology and the technology. Okay? But the thing is, why these are just because we are depending on some technology which is developed by the technology. Okay. But here what I want is, see two weeks back I just started an Atma network project. Okay. 
So there also people are talking about, now the whole India is talking about self-sustainability. So what I say is that, what are the investments we do, okay? We have to take some portion of that for our own innovation, okay? That's what during my uh, innovation, during COVID time, I just invented as an individual, not as an uh, organization or something. So here what I see that, if we go like for CSR, corporate social responsibility, if we keep that one in mind, it's like that something forcing us to control. But I would introduce on board that ISR. It's like individual social responsibility or industrial social responsibility. And I can say you guys are Thank you. Today we are living in an environment where the frequencies are and it is also said in case you can't disturb others, you will get disturbed. That's, that's the way the businesses are. And in such an environment, what is the way out? How do you save? It means, is the technology is supporting us or providing solutions to us? The way I look at it, the way I think the technology has provided solutions to us for many businesses issues. All why the Amazon is uh, so active, whatever the platform what it is today, because of the technology that's part of the business. And maybe many many IT companies or many uh, e commerce companies where they stand because of the technology. That's it. Maybe if you to look at it, maybe many years ago, the role of the finance sector is more on the accounting side, the compliance others. The way you look at it today, and the COVID has also pushed the role of the CFOs, the finance team, on the COVID. Because during that period, the cash is looking for any business, or the cash is getting managed, that's the way the businesses were getting managed in the period. I think the CFOs were more or less in the driver's seat during that period, most of the large the past. So, where is that? Today, if you look at it, the, the finance functions may be in a firm. Five years from now, I think up to the middle level, this will get used. Not required. That's the way it is going to be done. All the positions which are listed account manager not required because uh, somebody who is required for compliance is required. I don't need. I 